Why hello there people from the internet and welcome to more Battlefield. Today we're playing some Battlefield 4. I miss the variety of it. I just miss sort of the madness of it. You know, everybody being equipped with some sort of lock on and every time you do a bit of flying it's all peep 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 peep. I kind of, I know it's kind of stupid to say, well, how can you miss the lock-ons? Everybody complained about it. There was way too many. Just sort of point, lock-on and forget about weapons. But you kind of do miss it a little bit. I mean, I'm sure, I'd love to be 90% of them. I'd love to have them taken off and whatever from Battlefield 4. But still, you kind of do miss it for a little bit until you sort of deploy your ECM jam. And you think, what the, how am I getting hit? I just deploy this and I'm still getting hit. What's going on? Bullshit. But that's kind of what the fun of Battlefield is. And today what I want to talk about is the sort of complete Battlefield experience. What game from the series would tick all the boxes for you? Now, this is a tricky question because undoubtedly you're asking somebody what is the best Battlefield game. And you can't really answer that question. Although people that have been playing the game for in recent couple of years. I mean, I've seen all sorts of posts on the internet on the Battlefield forum saying, Hey, I'm a Battlefield vet from Battlefield 4. And Baffy Hardline, you fucking not a vet, you're some nub cheese that played two games and you think you're a veteran and you're asking about fucking dog tag on the internet. But still, if you've been playing the game for all these years since Battlefield came out, it's sort of difficult for you to actually say what the best game is. I mean, like I said, for those of us that played it since day one, you're probably going to say Battlefield 2, you're probably going to say Vietnam, you're probably going to say 2142. Uh, you're probably going to say Bad Company. You know, there's a lot of games out there that were really great along the years. And I hope some of that magic sort of returns back into the Battlefield. And that's what makes the Battlefield game great. Is the fun of it. The madness of it. The sheer scale of it. It's just because everything was sort of got to a point where you had to be sort of skilled at something if you wanted to do fairly well. You couldn't just be what it is today. You know, point and shoot and just hit fire and shit like that it's just it's like battlefront i mentioned in the previous video it's like casual friendly you had to be a little bit specialized back in the day to make it sort of work i mean 1943 was just an amazing game even though it only came out on the consoles and it was only like a download i think something like that it was psn download or whatever it was called back in those days and it was just an amazing game and i really hoped that that's something that they'll build on and they'll get more maps and more this and more that for it. But it was just one of those little things that they tried. It was just a cheap game. They got it out and it just worked. It was definitely a fun game. Now, I still have my hopes up that the next Battlefield game, which is going to be released next year, it's going to be 2018. So in 2018, it's going to be the next Battlefield. And my hopes and my fingers are crossed for it to be a Battlefield 1944. And I still think 1944 is just going to be the game that makes sense for everybody. We kind of been through the era with Battlefield 3 and Hardline and Battlefield 4 and all that with everything's modern and everything's sort of futuristic and weapons and things like that where they can lock onto planes and shit like that and I think going back to Battlefield 1 was the right decision for them to do it was definitely a great game it's a good game for you to play it's something to pick up with your friends enjoy it a little bit and then wait for sort of DLC and things like that and eventually you'll go back to it and you'll you'll get your money's worth out of it that's what I, kind of what I'm saying but 1944 just makes sense because you're going to have so much more to explore. There have been so many more weapons developed. The planes, the sort of technology and everything was changed so much by the time World War II started. So by having a game set in 1944 at the height of the sort of war when everything was going on and everybody was making fucking a thousand tanks a month, then I think that's going to be a great era for them to explore. Plus the DLCs and things like that, they're going to make... A ton of money after that but it's going to be an epic game if they if, if they sort of do it right now getting back into it a little bit now what game would you say that it's going to be the one that ticks all the boxes for you now i'll have to put in battlefield 2 because i just have to i mean it's going to be a tricky one because like i said it's going to be different because if you didn't play the games back in those days you'll not really understand what the fun of it was you know, there just simply wasn't anything like it. You know, everything's sort of different today because the graphics are really nice and you have a lot of companies and a lot of stuff making games and you've got the Battlefields and you've got Rainbow Six and you have a lot of things out there that sort of compete with each other to a certain level. I mean, sure, you're not going to have what you have in Battlefield in Rainbow Six Siege, but you also have 
most of the things that you'll see in the, in the game, you'll probably see in the other one at some form or the other. But back in 2005, when Battlefield 2 got released, it just simply wasn't anything like it. It was just one of those things like you think, what the fuck? Just that simple. And for me to think about it, I mean, I've been playing Battlefield games for holy hell. 20 fucking years. Yeah, it's been almost that long. And just to think of how technologies change, how the game changed in all these years and how everything works and the community got bigger and you know battlefield used to be one of those games where not really that many people knew about it there was a land thing you play a lot of it on lands and things like that it was just a different era back those days and that's what sort of made battlefield fun to what it was and that's why it's still drawing me to a battlefield game today you know it's a bit in a battlefield game for everybody if you love flying there's something there for you there's planes there's jets there's little birds there's helicopters if you love tanks, there's tanks, there's lives, there's all sorts of vehicles for you to try out. If you just love to sort of go around and blow shit up on a Jeep, you can do that. You know, there's a bit for everybody, close quarter maps, all sorts of stuff for everybody It's going to be in there. Now, the setting is what really makes the game great. I mean, a lot of the times you'll find that you get yourself into a game and you'll find a really good settings. I mean... The nearest one that I can think of, say Bad Company 2 Vietnam DLC. Now, Vietnam DLC it got released around sort of Christmas time after Bad Company was released in sort of March. And then to make matters even better, what they did is instead of making sort of community uh, assignment, get this dog tag or whatever, you actually had another map, which is Operation Hastings. So it was pretty cool back in those days where you got something that it was really fun and really cool and you could work together as a team. As a community, you can work together to actually get something that everybody wanted. You know, I mean, I've, personally, I couldn't really care if they had no dog tags in the game. I never really had the need for me to sort of equip a dog tag with something on it. But maybe that's just me. Somebody must be enjoying the dog tag since they sort of have one of these going at least once or twice a month. So by this stage, you probably got yourself some games in your mind and you're thinking, well, am I going to put this down? Am I going to put that down? I'll go ahead and make it just a little bit easier for you. And you can go ahead and put two games down because it's just going to make it a bit easier. I know it's going to be hard just making that one choice, but still having two choices is just going to make it a little bit easier for you to put down. And I think that's what's one of the reasons why I always come back to a Battlefield game. You know, it's the game that... I never really wanted to go and play anything else because he had everything in there. If I was good enough at Jets, I'll move on to a little bird. If I was good enough in a little bird, I'd move on to the plane, uh, to the sort of attack helicopter. I'd move on to close quarters, to the ground fighting, you know. There's just going to be a bit for everybody in a Battlefield game. And a good setting, a great sounds of the weapons like you had in Bad Company and, and things like that. Like the amazing sort of maps that you had in Bad Company. A great maps like you had the Down Van Peak in Battlefield 3. You know, things like that will keep sort of in your memory and you think, yep, really enjoy that one. Even though the years keep on passing by, you'll still remember your great memories from previous Battlefield titles. You'll remember how cool it was for you to launch yourself in a pod to get to the Titan. You'll remember the great maps from Bad Company 2 on Rush. You'll remember the Wookiee suits. You'll remember how awesome it was for you to jump first time off a Damavan Peak in Rush going all the way down. You'll remember how cool everything was about a particular game so hopefully that will keep on going and that's what the magic of battlefield is you'll have to let me know some of the things that you've enjoyed so far in the world of battlefield hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up post a comment and i'll see you in the next one